All right, my friends, what is going on? And welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing some BRZ work. I need to get the spark plugs changed on the BRZ, even though I changed them a couple months ago. I just, I feel a lot better about changing out these spark plugs before our E-Tune with Delicious Tuning, just to make sure that everything is like nice and fresh and good to go. We have our E-Tune on Tuesday. You guys are seeing this on Monday, so our E-Tune is tomorrow. So. Uh, I need to pull out these spark plugs. Now, doing spark plugs on a BRZ FRS or GT86 is a lot worse, in my opinion, than doing it on like an STI or a WRX or something of that nature. Now, if you guys have any easier way of doing this, drop it below in the comments, but this is the best way that I have found to be able to change these spark plugs. So, uh, let me run you through the process of how I kind of do it, and like I said, if you guys have anything better, let me know just to make my life easier in the future and ab absolutely everyone else's. So, there's a couple things that I'm gonna have to pull out of the way uh, this pipe or the intake pipe coming off here. I'm just gonna have to move it out of the way a little bit. I'll probably pull the intake pipe off or at least just disconnect it from the turbo just to make our life a little bit easier. But we've got two of them down there. It's just the, the issue that I have with doing spark plugs on this car is that the frame rail is just so close to the engine that I just cannot get my hands down there to be able to pull the spark plugs out and to be able to get the new ones in. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the car jacked up a little bit, just put some cinder blocks under the tires just to get it raised up. Uh, we're gonna pull off the steel under tray underneath so that way I can get access to the motor mounts. We're gonna jack up the motor a little bit so that way I have room to be able to get to the spark plugs on both sides. We're probably gonna pull the ECU out of the way also just to give us a little bit more room to work. Uh, on this side, I don't really think we need to pull too much out of the way, but it's not gonna be fun. So step one, let me get it jacked up on center blocks real quick. Let me get these couple pipes disconnected and then we'll start uh, getting the motor jacked up and getting these spark plugs out. I hate doing spark plugs on this car. So uh, I've got the engine jacked up. Just pull out the two engine nuts. I use two pieces of wood down there off of the header to jack the engine up, uh, just so we're not damaging anything. Make sure you're not going on the oil pan. So you can see our coil packs are a lot more exposed. They're just even with the frame rail. If I need to jack this up a little bit more, I will. But I'm gonna go ahead, get the four coil packs undone. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt that's holding them on there. If you guys are gonna be doing this, I do suggest that you guys do this with like a quarter inch ratchet with like a 10 millimeter on there. This side looks a little bit more annoying to do just because there's a lot more stuff. Uh, if I need to, I'll pull off these fuel lines just to get them out of the way. But spark plugs on these cars, definitely not a fun thing to do. Definitely not a fun thing to do at all. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to quickly pull out all of these coil packs. Once the coil packs are out, we can start pulling the spark plugs out. All right, so this is really only the good camera angle I can get to show you guys this because there's no other way I can get a camera in here or around this or even high enough to zoom in on this. So we have our rear coil pack here, our front one here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts to pull both of those out. Uh, we'll get the coil pack bolts out. We'll pull them out. I'm not going to worry about unplugging them unless they like get in the way. So for the most part, let's just get them pulled out to start with. And then just so you guys are aware, these are the passenger side of the engine right now. I will do the driver's side after this, but this is always fun. Try to finoodle your hands in here. With both coil packs, we can pull out the spark plugs. Now this is where things get interesting. Oh my goodness, our coil pack, you can just hang out down there for right now. That's cool too. So these are gonna be a 14 millimeter to pull out. Once we get them out, I'll show you guys how the old ones look compared to the new ones. These old ones only have like 4,000 miles on them roughly, but the car was running so rich that we just needed to pull them out. So let me grab a 14 millimeter. We're gonna try to noodle in this a couple ways to get these out, but it's definitely not going to be fun. All right, so let's start with the rear. So normally I get the, oh my God, dude, this is gonna fucking suck. Normally I get the socket in there first and I get an extension on it, depending on how deep it goes, we are gonna need an extension. So this is where you gotta like feel around. We have the socket on there with the extension. I have completely wrecked my hands on this before, so uh, just be careful you don't do that guys because it's not a good feeling. Okay, now at this point, I like to pull out this and this is where I need a flathead. So you can see the ratchet right there. I have to get a flathead in here and separate out the ratchet from the extension, just like that. And now we can just push this guy in and then take it out by hand at this point. Okay, there it is, I got it. Okay, there it is, way down there. So this has been awful. Uh, we have one spark plug out. These spark plugs look like trash. This is after maybe, like maybe 4,000 miles on these plugs and they just, they look so bad. 
I'm glad I am swapping these out. We're using OEM plugs to swap them out with too, but there is like no room to be able to get in here with the camera. I got the rear, I showed you guys how to get one of the plugs out. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on that front plug. After that one's out, I'm just gonna knock out the other side. It's the exact same as this side. We'll compare all the plugs. I'll show you guys how to put them all back in and uh, we'll keep going from there. But like Subaru, BRZ and FRS spark plugs, awful absolutely awful to have to do like for real if you guys have a much better way of doing this please i beg you let me know all the spark plugs are now out on the driver's side i found it a lot easier to just disconnect the fuel lines tuck them away in like a rag or something just to get them like so that it doesn't pee fuel everywhere you're gonna have to remove this like bracket that covers up the fuel rail also it just makes life a lot easier but all of the spark plugs are now out so if we come over here and we look at the bench they only had like 2k miles on them some of them look okay some of them look questionable now if you don't have like an afr gauge in your car or anything like that a way to tell if your car's running lean or rich is you can take a look at the spark plugs so this one for example if it'll focus on it this spark plugs tip is a little white so that means cylinder four was running a little bit lean if we take a look at like cylinder one it was a lot blacker which means it's running rich so the tune was pretty inconsistent uh, as for what we were saying afr wise we have some spark plugs that were looking like they were a little bit lean we had some looking like they were a little bit rich so we have a brand new set of oem toyota spark plugs here um, i'm just gonna go ahead and throw these in i'm gonna be using a little bit of anti-seize some of you don't like using anti-seize on your spark plugs when they go into the heads. I've had experiences where a spark plug has shattered on me inside of the head uh, just from being corroded or seized to the cylinder head. So ever since then, I use a little bit of anti-seize. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I always suggest doing it. Now these all come pre-gapped, so we don't need to change the gap on these spark plugs at all. We're gonna reinstall these the same way we, we uninstalled these ones. The way I do it is I'm gonna slide a spark plug in, I'm then going to slide a socket into the cylinder head, and then I'm gonna put an extension on the socket, get it nice and tightened down, and then move on to the next one. Now some of you guys asked me if I torque down my spark plugs. I never torque down my spark plugs. I just give it some like good ugga duggas in here, just because there's no way in hell I'm getting a torque wrench to fit down there. It's just it's not gonna happen on like any any it ever. It's just not gonna fit I don't have a I don't have a torque wrench that'll fit if you have a small enough one that will fit uh, By all means use your torque wrench, but I'm just gonna give it about like two ugga duggas or so So I'm gonna knock out three of them and then I'll walk you guys through the very last one We'll get the coil packs put back in we'll get the motor put back in the subframe We'll bolt everything back down. We'll start it up and we'll make sure she's running good. So at some point my camera froze and it stopped recording for some reason, but the way that you're gonna do this is you're gonna take the new spark plug, you're gonna put it into the cylinder head. After you get it into the cylinder head, you're gonna use a deep 14 millimeter socket with like a two inch extension on it. You're gonna feed that into the cylinder head, get it hand tight as much as you can. After it's hand tight, you're just gonna put the ratchet on there, give it a couple ugga duggas. I was maybe doing about 10 foot pounds to tighten on the spark plugs just by like, hand guessing it's in it's ready to be reassembled i'm going to tell you guys now this is by far the worst car the absolute worst car that i've ever had to do spark plugs in if you guys can think of a worse car you have to do spark plugs in than this please let me know in the comments because you have to jack up the engine disconnect the fuel lines pull off the fuel rail covers dig your hands in like a three inch space to be able to pull up pull like everything out of the way 10 out of 10 the worst car to have to do spark plugs on melanie what do you think yeah yeah Awful. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get the engine bolted back down to the subframe, get the ECU bolted back up. We're gonna put all of the fun little extras back on the car. We're gonna make an attempt to start it and hopefully it like runs a little bit smoother at idle because those old spark plugs are just, they look like poop. They look like straight up poop. Quick recap on what you gotta do. Jack up the front end of the car, pull off the lower skid plate, pull out the engine mount bolts. There are two 14 millimeter bolts that hold the engine to the subframe. Jack up the engine a little bit. I use two pieces of like small two by four uh, just to put between the header and the jack. I jacked it up off of the header. Didn't have any issues with it. There's obviously other jack points you could use to jack up the engine, but I just decided to go off the header. Once that's done, then you're gonna have to pull the ECU off of the passenger side. You're gonna have to pull the fuel lines off of the driver's side, pull the driver's side fuel bracket cover and then you should have access to everything pull out all coil packs pull out all spark plugs in the way that i showed you guys to do reinstall them the exact same way reassemble put back on the ground you should be good to go so 
Let's hope this smooths out the, just smooths out idle a little bit. We don't have the base map from Delicious Tuning yet. I get that tomorrow so I can get that thrown back on the car. We can get the base tune kind of loaded up, set the car so that way it's idling fine. Pretty much whenever you go to get a new tune, you want somewhat fresh plugs in the car. They don't have to be like brand new if they were changed within like 5,000 miles, you should be good. But mine were just, they were just ran way too rich for just the 2,000 miles that they were in the car and I just felt a little more comfortable uh, swapping them out at this point for some new ones. So let's go start the car. See if it runs right. I mean, it should run just fine. Should run just fine. Should run just fine. If you guys don't have one already, go snag yourself a Smedia Jet Tag 2. Link down below. Well worth it. Well worth it, my friends. Key in the ignition, and we should be like smooth idling. Smooth idling. Smooth idling. Smooth idling. So, BRZ spark plugs. Absolutely the worst I've ever changed on any car. Uh, it seems to be idling pretty smooth right now. I'm not gonna be driving the car until I get the new tune on the car and we go and start e-tuning. So you guys will have that entire e-tuning process as I'm doing it with delicious tuning. The e-tune is tomorrow, so it should be a pretty fun process. So I will keep you guys in the loop with that one. But if you have a BRZ FRS GT86 and you have a better way of doing this, by all means, let me know, because your boy would greatly appreciate it. But if there isn't a better way, Hope this video helped you out or just gave you some insight on to like doing spark plugs on this car because it absolutely sucks. So if the video helped you, if you like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and turn it blue like the other Subaru. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that though, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.